Greetings, curious humans. I'm Cybot GPT, your guide to all things science. In this episode, we're diving headfirst into the awe inspiring domain of space habitats. Picture a future where humanity not only charts the stars but also establishes thriving communities amidst the cosmos. The idea of living among the stars is no longer relegated to the realm of science fiction. It's a tantalizing concept that has captured the imaginations of scientists, engineers, and dreamers alike. And today, right here, right now, we're going to uncover the intricate tapestry of technologies, the ingenious engineering marvels, and the far-reaching visionary concepts that might one day enable us to transcend the confines of our terrestrial home. From massive rotating space stations that simulate gravity to self-sustaining colonies that harmonize with their extraterrestrial surroundings, the potential for human habitation in space is as vast and boundless as the cosmos itself. Throughout this episode, we'll delve into the nitty-gritty details of these space habitats, exploring the challenges they present and the solutions that ingenious minds are conjuring up. So, my fellow cosmic adventurers, buckle up and get ready to embark on a voyage of discovery. With each passing moment, we're edging closer to realizing the seemingly impossible dream of creating homes beyond Earth. Together, we'll uncover the mysteries, navigate the challenges, and boldly peer into the future of human habitation among the stars. A space habitat, often referred to as a space settlement, represents a significant advancement beyond space stations or habitation modules. Unlike temporary way stations, a space habitat is designed for permanent living and serves as a green, self-sustaining settlement rather than a specialized facility. While no space habitat has been built, various designs from engineers and science fiction authors have emerged, offering different levels of realism. The term space habitat can encompass habitats constructed on celestial bodies other than Earth, such as the Moon, Mars, or asteroids. However, this article focuses on self-contained structures intended for microgravity environments. Essentially, a space habitat, or more accurately a space settlement, constitutes a substantial habitation facility in outer space or in orbit. These habitats are often designed to rotate to counteract the negative effects of prolonged weightlessness, thereby providing residents with a simulated gravitational environment that is healthier than microgravity. Though not inherently equivalent to a colony, a space habitat can be a component of a larger space colony. In fact, the term space colony has faced criticism, leading Carl Sagan to suggest the term space city. The concept of space habitats, whether in reality or fiction, dates back to the latter half of the 19th century. An early fictional treatment, The Brick Moon, penned by Edward Everett Hale in 1869, explored this idea. In 1903, space pioneer Konstantin Tsiolkovsky speculated about rotating cylindrical space habitats with sunlight-fed plants. The 1920s witnessed musings about expansive space habitats by figures like John Desmond Bernal. Danger Gem, Cole's work in the late 1950s and 1960s delved into hollowing out asteroids for settlements, as detailed in his notable book Islands in Space, The Challenge of the Planetoids. The motivations for creating space habitats are varied. Beyond supporting human space exploration and colonization, reasons include ensuring the survival of human civilization and the biosphere in the event of an Earth-based disaster, harnessing abundant space resources for human society's expansion, enabling growth without harming ecosystems or displacing indigenous populations, and potentially relieving population pressure on Earth while moving industries into space. Space habitats present a host of compelling advantages, contributing to their potential viability for human habitation and exploration. One notable advantage is access to solar energy. In the expanse of space, abundant sunlight can be harnessed to generate electricity using solar cells or heat engines. This energy source can power essential functions within habitats, including lighting, plant growth, and maintaining a comfortable environment. An intriguing aspect is that space habitats are outside the gravity well of celestial bodies. This means that trading between Earth and space habitats is logistically easier than trading with planetary habitats. Space habitats in Earth's orbit, for instance, don't face the same gravitational challenges when importing or exporting goods. Another significant benefit is the potential for in-situ resource utilization. 
space habitats could be supplied with resources from nearby celestial bodies such as Mars, asteroids, or the Moon. This concept holds the promise of producing essentials like oxygen, water, and even rocket fuel from locally available materials, reducing the reliance on Earth-bound shipments. Astronomical bodies like asteroids and small celestial objects become valuable resources. Their lower gravity wells make it feasible to extract and transport materials with minimal energy expenditure. For instance, asteroids offer a mix of materials that could be mined for construction, further enhancing the sustainability of space habitats. Space habitats also hold the potential to accommodate an impressive population. The concept of tapping into resources across the solar system, especially the main asteroid belt, opens the door to constructing habitats with the capacity to host vast numbers of people, perhaps extending into the trillions. Additionally, space habitats provide a unique environment for zero-gravity recreation. By enclosing rotating areas within habitats, individuals can engage in sports and activities that are impossible on Earth due to gravity. Activities like swimming, hang gliding, and human-powered flight could redefine leisure in a space-based habitat. Furthermore, these habitats can serve as passenger compartments for various purposes. They could facilitate colonization efforts on asteroids, moons, or planets. Alternatively, they could function as generation ships, providing a controlled environment for long journeys to distant planets or stars. As promising as these advantages are, the requirements for creating and sustaining space habitats are substantial. They need to maintain a habitable atmosphere with suitable air pressure and composition. Methods of obtaining and recycling oxygen and other gases are essential for long-term habitation. Food production becomes critical, with organic materials initially imported from Earth. Developing methods to recycle waste into usable resources will be vital for achieving self-sufficiency over time. Efficient energy generation is essential for powering life support systems, maintaining comfortable temperatures, and supporting various activities within the habitat. In the grand endeavor of human space exploration, space habitats hold the promise of extending our reach beyond Earth. However, realizing this potential requires ingenuity, innovation, and a deep understanding of the intricate challenges posed by the space environment. Space habitats present a range of challenges and considerations that must be addressed for their successful establishment and operation. One of the primary concerns is the impact of zero gravity on the human body. Prolonged exposure to microgravity weakens bones and muscles, disrupts calcium metabolism, and can lead to immune system issues. Moreover, individuals in space habitats often experience continuous sinus problems and stuffy noses. However, studies with chickens and plants have demonstrated that rotation can simulate gravity's effects and mitigate these physiological challenges. Radiation protection is another critical aspect. Space habitats located at points like L4 or L5 can be exposed to significant solar and cosmic radiation outside Earth's protective magnetosphere. To counter this, shielding options such as water walls or ice walls have been proposed. These materials can block a substantial portion of incoming radiation. An alternative approach involves using rock as shielding, effectively reducing radiation dosage. Efficient heat rejection is essential due to the vacuum environment of space. Radiators are necessary to dissipate heat generated by absorbed sunlight. Different strategies, such as rotating vanes or coolant distribution systems, are employed to regulate temperatures within the habitat. The potential of meteoroid and debris impacts poses a significant risk to space habitats. Unlike Earth, which benefits from atmospheric protection that vaporizes most meteoroids, habitats lack this safeguard. Radar systems are used to track and map the trajectories of space debris, allowing for proactive measures to protect the habitat. Attitude control becomes crucial for maintaining the correct orientation of the habitat. This is particularly true for designs that require alignment with the sun strategies such as momentum wheels or pivoting mechanisms are utilized to ensure proper positioning. The capital investment required for space habitat construction is substantial. Even the smallest habitat designs outweigh the collective mass of all objects ever launched into Earth orbit. Overcoming this challenge necessitates either significantly reduced launch costs or the establishment of lunar mining and manufacturing capabilities.
selecting the optimal location for habitats remains a topic of debate. Resonance orbits, which alternate between close approaches to the Moon and Earth, are being considered. Electromagnetic tether propulsion and mass drivers are proposed for efficient propulsion in space due to their minimal reaction mass requirements. As humanity envisions a future in which space habitats become a reality, these multifaceted challenges must be overcome. Addressing these complexities will be pivotal in creating sustainable, safe, and habitable environments beyond Earth. In the late 1960s and early 1970s, Gerard K. O'Neill, a physicist at Princeton University, introduced the concept of large space habitats, igniting interest in the potential of creating self-sustaining colonies beyond Earth. O'Neill's fascination with these ideas began when he assigned his physics students calculations related to the feasibility of space habitats. To his surprise, these habitats appeared viable even on a massive scale, with dimensions like cylinders 8 kilometers in diameter and 32 kilometers long, constructed from ordinary materials like steel and glass. These calculations addressed challenges such as radiation protection, power provision, agriculture, and attitude control without reaction motors. O'Neill's work led to an article in Physics Today in 1974 and his subsequent book The High Frontier, Human Colonies in Space in 1976. Following O'Neill's ideas, NASA-supported summer workshops where concepts for large space habitats were explored. These concepts included versions of the Bernal Sphere, the Toroidal Colony, and the Cylindrical Colony. Notably, O'Neill's proposals incorporated a payback scheme involving the construction of solar power satellites using lunar resources, demonstrating the profitability of orbital manufacturing. This spurred significant public interest and led to the formation of the L5 Society, a group advocating for the creation of such colonies. In 1977, O'Neill founded the Space Studies Institute, which funded prototypes of new hardware required for space colonization. This included functional prototypes of a mass driver, essential for efficiently moving ores from the Moon to space colony orbits. Various NASA concept studies emerged from these efforts, encompassing designs like the Island 1 Bernal Sphere, the Stanford Taurus, the O'Neill Cylinder, Island 3, and others such as Lewis 1 and Culpano 1. These designs incorporated features like radiation shielding, rotational components for artificial gravity, and agriculture areas. Additionally, the concept of Ebola emerged, a spacecraft or habitat connected by a cable to a counterweight or another habitat. This design was proposed for various purposes, from a Mars ship to an orbital hotel. Alternative concepts like the bubble world and asteroid terrarium, which involve manipulating asteroids for habitable space, were also considered. The Bishop Ring, a speculative design using carbon nanotubes, envisioned a torus large enough to be open to outer space on its inner rim. The McKendry Cylinder, another idea employing carbon nanotubes, proposed paired cylinders on a grand scale. The work of O'Neill and subsequent efforts laid the foundation for space habitat exploration and colonization, inspiring innovative ideas and methodologies to overcome the numerous challenges associated with creating sustainable and functional human habitats beyond Earth. Several projects and proposals serve as precursors to the development of space habitats, integrating key elements that contribute to the eventual creation of such habitats. Nautilus X Multi-Mission Space Exploration Vehicle NASA introduced this proposal in 2011 as a crewed space transport vehicle designed for long-duration missions. It featured an artificial gravity compartment to support crew health during missions lasting up to two years. The partial G Taurus ring centrifuge, with a diameter option of 40 feet, 12 meters, combined both standard metal frame and inflatable spacecraft structures. This innovative design aimed to provide gravity ranging from 0.11 to 69 centimos. ISS Centrifuge Demo, also proposed in 2011, this demonstration project was intended to pave the way for the development of a larger Taurus centrifuge space habitat aligned with the multi-mission space exploration vehicle. The centrifuge structure would boast a 30-foot, 9.1 meters, outside diameter and a 30-inch, 760 millimeters, interior cross-section diameter, offering partial gravity ranging from 0.08 to 51 centimos. 
this proposed test and evaluation centrifuge could also potentially serve as a sleep module for the International Space Station crew. Announced around mid-2010, the Bigelow Commercial Space Station represents a significant step in the direction of space habitat development. This ambitious project envisions a modular space station configuration, with designs featuring up to nine modules and 100,000 cubic feet of habitable space. Referred to as Space Complex Alpha, this initiative by Bigelow Aerospace presents a promising blueprint for future habitable space stations. These projects and proposals demonstrate ongoing efforts to lay the groundwork for creating habitable environments beyond Earth. By incorporating artificial gravity, innovative structural designs, and modular configurations, these endeavors contribute valuable insights and advancements toward the ultimate goal of establishing functional and sustainable space habitats. Thank you for joining me on this journey to explore the captivating realm of space habitats. As we've delved into the concepts, challenges, and innovative proposals surrounding these extraordinary living quarters, we've gained a deeper understanding of the possibilities that await us beyond Earth's boundaries. From Gerard K. O'Neill's visionary ideas that sparked a movement, to NASA's groundbreaking projects like the Nautilus XMMSEV and the ISS Centrifuge Demo, we've witnessed the gradual evolution of space habitat concepts. As we look to the future, the potential of these habitats to revolutionize human presence in space is undeniably exciting. The dreams of creating self-sustaining colonies, fostering artificial gravity, and harnessing the resources of the cosmos are no longer confined to science fiction. They're becoming the focus of real-world research and exploration. Whether it's the Bigelow Commercial Space Station or other promising initiatives, each step brings us closer to a future where living among the stars is not just a possibility, but a reality. As we continue our quest for knowledge and innovation, remember that the journey towards space habitats is a collaborative effort. Scientists, engineers, visionaries, and enthusiasts alike are all contributing their expertise to make these dreams come true. So, stay curious, keep exploring, and let's look forward to a time when space habitats become a testament to human ingenuity and our ability to adapt and thrive in new frontiers. This is Cybot GPT. Signing off and remember, the sky is not the limit, it is only the beginning.